Carl, welcome to this week's edition of In The Dugout. We'll start off, as always, with a few questions from the fans. The first one from Christopher Moss, and he says, when do we pay the rest of our season ticket deposit that was due, and how much will it be? Um, <clears throat> I think an email's gone out, I think by the end of January. Uh, I presume, you know, if you if you get it paid, it's got to be paid before the first league game of the season. And obviously it's £30. Um, the deposit of £30, we, you know, if we've got over the 500 adults, then it would have went down. So its total was £60, so if you paid 30 then it's 30 And as you said, the email has gone out to all those people who purchased season tickets, letting them know when the deadline is for them to pay it. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone's had uh, an email from the club. Philip Scholar asks, will squad numbers be announced before the first friendly? Are we having squad numbers this year? You're, you're the boss. Sounds like it. <laughs> Philip, you know more than me, bro. Yeah, no, no. We'll, um, the squad numbers will be getting announced, I'd say, in the next week or so. Um, next Saturday, the boys, we've got the photographer down to take all the head and shoulder shots, so... I would like to think um, the week after they'll be up in full flow on the website. Um, but yeah, we'll um, we'll mention the, the the squad numbers before then. Yeah, get the squad numbers out there just in time for the two friendly, so that people aren't wondering who's who on the pitch. Yeah, um, and like I say, we we've had to book a, a professional photographer like we always do, and. He's, he's available next Saturday, so all the boys will be down next Saturday doing the head and shoulder shots. Like I said, we try to get that looking more smart and professional on the website. So for those asking, instead of asking week in, every week now, it, it'll be up and, and running in the next week or so. Jeremy Burrows asks, is there anything the Dons can do to link in with the up and under play, which is going to be in Doncaster in March? Yeah, I can't see why not. Um, you know, I think it's a rugby league show, so we might as well be certainly good to go and see. I'm pretty sure I might go and have a look. Uh, on to other questions then. You, we've been speaking off camera about our league, which is an app which could be potentially beneficial to the club. Just explain a little bit about what the sort of benefits are. Yeah, it, uh, it's all right too. Uh, you know, go go on to your, you know, how do you get those apps and that now on what App Store? App Store, yeah. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Um, and our league, it's a lot of rugby league information and there's some, some good clips on there as well. But the um, the RFL now is, you know, everything's going to be a return on their investment. And the more members we get on, so, you know, our league and that sort of stuff, if we move up a place, then, it, you know, it contributes to our um, our distribution we get. And so, you know, I urge and I ask all our supporters to certainly download the app. It's, it's free. Um, it was brilliant while the World Cup was on. There was a lot of good stuff on there. And I'm sure with the Rugby League, Super League and that starting soon, there'll be some lot more interviews. It's a real good app. Um, but the way the, the RFL is going is trying to grow that membership. And you need to make sure when you register that you register that your club is Doncaster. And it's more exposure for the club as well, isn't it? After all the interest we had with Challenge 1000 and things like that, it's just another chance to get the, the club out there. Yeah, and, the, and again, the, that was all part of this return on investment. Um, you know, you're, you're getting a, a distribution off the RFL, and they're wanting something back out of you for it. And we, you know, we, the numbers, the gates, the crowds, um, we've just got to toe the line uh, with what you know. We nobody at this stage knows what direction the game is going to take, and if we just make sure we do everything we can in our power and do everything right. We should be okay, but um, we can only control what we control, and then see what happens later on. Some sad news earlier on this week, which saw the whole rugby league world unite, didn't it? The death of Keito Otio just a couple of days after he, well, before he was due to fly out and, and begin his life with Witness Vikings in, in Super League. Yeah, terrible. Um, Twenty-three years old. He was training, so just you know, uh, I was I went to the game last week with Gary Lowe and. We were talking about them boys coming over, they're coming Thursday. And uh, I think Gary roomed with him and he um, he was his winger. Uh, Kato was his centre, so 
when Tali sent me the message, it was a real shock, you know, and it wasn't out there, but um, just a tragedy, you know. Went training with the PNG Hunters and just collapsed. I think it was very, very hot or something. But it's um, it's a sad, sad loss to the game and the boy had the world at his feet. And Wellington Albert, someone who you know personally from the chats you've had, we've, we've discussed him before and he's been offered counselling by Witness Vikings for when he does eventually come over here. Yeah, and uh, another bit of news there was uh, come out today is that and I think it's very smart on, on Witness's behalf as they've now enticed um, Stanton to come with Wellington which I think is a, a very clever move so um, you know the two boys we we thought we had they'll be playing Super League so all the best to them. It'll be interesting to see how they go on as well won't it we've, we've spoken about them or Wellington in particular in the past are you excited now to, to see now there's sort of water under the bridge if you like are you excited to see how they're both going in Super League? Yeah, yeah, listen, we'll all be excited to see it. Every time they, we see them play or something, we'll all be thinking, ooh, we could have had them. But uh, all the best of them is Super League. Like I said, it was Super League and League One, and that was the only decision that they, you know, the boys want to play at a top level, and um, they've done it, you know. Um, I, I think, I, like I say, I think it's a very clever move on Witness's behalf to because I'm not sure how he would have been if he had to come on his own. Back onto the Dons, and I spoke to Brad England earlier on this week, who was telling me he's lost eight kilos since the end of last season, got himself into some good shape, and, and that's the sort of professionalism that we're looking for heading into this season. How's he done that? Strict diet, hard gym work, you'll have to ask Brad. That's not what you told me before. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, uh, unbelievable. Um, well, he's not the biggest of lads, Anyway, so it's a lot to um, to lose, but he trains real hard, does Brad. He's he's really dedicated and he does everything right. So if if he thinks he needed to get down to that weight, well then that you know he knows his own body. That's um, example to set, isn't it? As well, people will be looking at him and thinking he's done that to get himself a regular place in the team, and, and that's what other people will be wanting to follow as well. Yeah, he'll Brad will be wanting a real big season. Um, he's you know he. He had a good year last year, just getting through all the injuries he had and that. Um, and, you know, he was one who was talked about in the game to go far and he's had some bad luck, but it seems his luck's turned and, you know, he's destined for bigger things. Friendly's coming up then, London and Batley Bulldogs coming down here to the keep out Batley on, on pitch two at the end of January. What sort of tests can we expect next? <coughs> It's getting closer and the lads are going to be, is this the week where, leadly, the week leading up to the first friendly, is that where you get more sort of in-depth training and more bit of contact, just preparing yourself for those games? Yeah, the, the London game will be tough for, the, you know, what, what's coming out of their campers, they're all looking forward to playing, they've been training hard and, and don't forget they were in the top four last year, so they'll be a real good side, tough team. Um, our boys want to play. You know, we're, we're due again. So, I'm looking forward to it. The, I think all the fans just can't wait. And Sunday's boring when there's no rugby league, eh? It's rubbish. So, next week we start, and then um, Batley will be another challenge the week after. But we'll just look forward to the London game. Um, I think we'll get a good turnout. For it. I, I really do. It's, with a little bit of excitement that's going around the place, um, I think it'll be good. You think it's a good chance to see where we're at as well against two good, solid championship sides. If we can put on good performances and get a couple of results there, then we know we're not too far off. Well, uh, Rich will just be looking at certain things. For he'll, he'll set them some certain challenges, what they're looking at. I don't think he'll be looking too too much at the scoreline. He'll be looking at you know stuff they've been working on and training. But it's like anything, if you can, you, you want to win. No, no doubt about it. The, you know, winning is a habit and losing is a habit, so um, we're looking forward to it.